God gave us a gift. And that gift is salvation. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God has given the world a gift, salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Why do we need salvation? Because we're all dying of the same terminal illness. It's called sin. And therefore, we all need a Savior. And there's only one Savior, and His name is Jesus. Now, to some people, that sounds super exclusive. Like, that's the problem I have with you Christians. Like, you know, you talk about this narrow view of salvation that's only through Jesus. Jesus is the one who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So, on its face, it is certainly a very exclusive claim. But the invitation is to anyone. The invitation is to anyone. Again, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Okay, not a select few. The world that he offered his only begotten son. The Bible says in John 1, 12, for as many as received him, as many as received him, to them that believed on his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Peter, when he preached in Acts chapter 2, 21, he said, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So yes, Jesus makes a very exclusive claim. You want to get to heaven? You want to have your sins forgiven? You got to go through me. But that invitation is open to anyone, anyone in the world. And thus, we need a Savior. And thus, we need Jesus to save us from our sin problem. You see, no one is good enough to get to God on their own. That's a fallacy. People think, I, I, I'm good enough to get there on my own. Really? I want, I want, if you believe that, I want you to just think for just a minute. How good is good enough? How good is good enough? Do you, do you think that heaven is about scales and balances? Because it's not. It's not like God's going to be like, you know what? That guy there, he's got, he, that Gary guy, he's got one good thing better than all the bad things. And so I'm going to let him in. I don't think so. My scale's like this. All right. Yours might be even like this. But anyway, mine is certainly out of proportion, right? Because all of us, you, you can't sleep at night thinking to yourself, I've done better today than all the bad things I've ever, ever thought, said, or done during the day. Ridiculous. So we're all doomed because if getting to heaven were based on my sense of goodness, I, I have no hope of ever getting there. But see, it's based on God's goodness, not on my goodness. It's based on his mercy, not anything I've done. It's what he did, which is why Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, because he paved the way and made it possible for our sins to be forgiven and for us to be able to go to heaven when we die if we would surrender our life to his lordship, if we would accept this free gift of salvation. Friends, all paths do not lead to God. There's only one, and it's through Jesus, and you need to accept him. Some of you have been living your lives for yourself, and it's time for you to live your life for Jesus and to let him take over your life and be Lord and give you the hope of a future and the forgiveness of sins and life everlasting. This is what we have through Jesus. This is why this is the greatest gift given to mankind because God so loved the world that he gave his son to die for us. And I'm going to invite you to accept him, to receive him into your life, to make him Lord and Savior. In 1970, the last number one song that the Beatles had was June the 13th, 1970. It was the song, A Long and Winding Road. And a lot of people thought that that song was about unrequited love, about how there was a broken relationship where, you know, a guy loved a girl and she didn't really respond in like kind, but that's not what it was about at all. It's actually a very sad song. Paul McCartney, who wrote it, was interviewed several years ago, and this is what he said that the song was about. He said, quote, It's rather a sad song. I like writing sad songs because you can actually acknowledge some deeper feelings of your own. It's a sad song because, listen, it's all about the unattainable, the door you never quite reach. This is the road that you never get to the end of, end quote. In other words, he's saying that the song, A Long and Winding Road, is about life. And that life is nothing more than a series of twists and turns and here and there. And you never really get to your ultimate destination. You never really feel fulfilled. You never really feel content. It is a sad song. Listen to the words in the middle of the song. 
Quote, many times I've been alone and many times I've cried. Anyway, you'll never know the many ways I've tried. And still, they lead me back to the long and winding road. End quote. This reflects a road that a lot of people are on. People without a sense of real purpose. People without a real sense of contentment. And you might have a lot of things and be very successful and you can still feel that way. I read this quote by Lindsey Vaughn. She's the Olympic gold medalist in the alpine ski racing. Uh, and, and she said this several years ago, quote, Everything about my life seemed so perfect to people, but I struggle like everyone else. She said at the time, quote, I couldn't get out of bed anymore. I felt hopeless, empty, like a zombie, end quote. Last year, in Esquire magazine, Bruce Springsteen said this, quote, I had no inner peace whatsoever. All I remember was feeling really badly and calling for help, end quote. That's the description of a lot of people. People who question life, question their purpose, who struggle with the shame of stuff that they've done, with the failures of today and the regrets of yesterday. People who suffer at different times with deep darkness in their own hearts and lives and wondering, is there any hope for me? Does God really love me? Can he really forgive me? And the answer to all that is yes, yes, and yes. And the answer is Jesus. Accept him. Receive him as your Lord and Savior. Again, John 1, 12, for as many as received him, accepted him, to them that believed on his name, he gave the right to become children of God. But you have to accept it. You know, a gift is only a gift if it is received. And God wants you to receive the greatest gift, which is his son. In a moment, I'm going to give an invitation for you to accept Jesus as your Savior, and I'm going to ask you to do a very bold and courageous thing. If you want to receive Christ as your Savior, or maybe for some of you that you prayed a prayer a long time ago, but it really hasn't meant anything, and you really need to commit your life again to the Lord, then I'm going to ask you in just a moment, when I start to pray, for you to get up out of your seat, and for you to come and stand down front here, not as a way in any way to embarrass you. In fact, everybody's going to applaud your decision today. It's a way for us to join in your decision. And then everybody who's standing down here, I'm going to lead in one single collective prayer for you to receive, for you to accept the free gift of salvation that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. But you're going to have to want it. You got to make that decision. God has done his part in dying for the sins of the world. He wants to rescue us from sin and death. But we have to respond. We have to say, yes, Lord. 2,000 years ago, God entered our world in the form of a baby that he might grow up to die on a cross for our sins, to pay the price in full. If you want to receive Christ, then do a bold thing. Make a decision today to get up out of your seat, come down here, and then I'm going to pray with everybody who's down here. And I want to make it easy for people who want to make this decision today by asking if you would, please, everybody just quietly stand. Don't try to leave, and you know, because then it just creates more distractions. Just stand if you would, please. And I want to just say that we have some people in the overflow rooms. If you want to get in on this decision, you can start walking right now. We invite you to come from the overflow rooms and come stand down here. And listen to me, while I'm praying, you can slip out of your seats right now, and then we're going to sing a song. And for whoever's down here, then I'm going to lead in a word of prayer. Don't be embarrassed. You're among friends who want to celebrate your decision. Get right with God today. Don't leave here today wondering where you stand with God. Get right with Him and know that your sins are forgiven, that Jesus loves you. Receive Him. Accept that free gift. I'm going to pray first. Father God, we thank You. This is Your story. How you came into the world to save us from our sins. I pray right now you would move in the hearts of men and women and young people to make a bold decision for you, to get out of their seats, to come and stand down here, that together we might honor you and acknowledge you as Lord and Savior. Father, move in our hearts right now. Glorify yourself in this place. Move by your Holy Spirit that people who want to receive you would accept you today. That people who know their need for you would invite you right now into their hearts. Lead them, Lord, as we sing this song for your glory. Accomplish your work now in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. You all come. Join some folks who have already come. We're going to sing this song. Are you hurting and broken with it? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? God bless you. Come on. Jesus is God calling. Bless you. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus. Christ will come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I see you walking. We're going to wait for you. We're not in a rush. Come on. Again, if you're in the overflow rooms and you want to join us, come on in the sanctuary. Join these folks who are walking down right now. Praise God. We're going to sing this chorus again. Come on. You come. And oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is See some folks still walking here. We're going to wait. We'll wait for you too. God bless you. Come on down here. God bless you. God bless you. We don't want to leave anyone out. I'm not going to pray until I'm sure that everybody is here who wants to be here today. Is there anyone else who wants to come? God bless you all. God bless you all over here. Anyone else? Anyone else? I'm just going to pause real briefly. God bless you. I see you. Come on down here. Thank you all for being patient while people are making decisions right now for Christ. So we want to make sure that we don't leave anybody out. God bless you. Come on down, man. God bless you. I see you, ladies. Come on. We're, we're going to wait for you. Oh, it's no, better, no better gift at Christmas than Jesus. No better gift. So thankful for these folks who have come down here to make a decision for Jesus today. Is there anyone else? Those of you who are standing down here about to make the most important decision you've ever made. But it's an eternal decision. And we're so happy for you. I'm going to lead in a word of prayer. And I'm just going to ask you to pray this prayer with me out loud. Okay? If you walk down here, just pray this prayer. I'm going to go slowly enough. You can just pray it right after me. Just, Just pray it out loud, but be bold about it. Okay? Let's pray this together. Just say this. Say, Lord Jesus. I thank you that you love me so much that you came into this world to save sinners. Forgive me of my sins. Wash over my life. Come into my heart right now as Lord and Savior. I surrender my life to you, Jesus. I believe in my heart heart. that God raised Jesus from the dead dead. 
And I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. By faith I accept the free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Come on, let's praise the Lord, church. Come on, church. Thank you, Lord.